Hey everyone, so today we'll be going over the 3D, I guess, drop effects. So if you've ever seen those TikTok games where, say, a ball and you tap the screen and you drop and it has to go in like this perfect position and then you win. Yeah, most of those utilizes 3D objects and um, the physics capabilities of Effect House. So let's get started on that. Uh, the first thing we'll need is, um, hmm, let's start with a cube. We'll call this floor. And just for reference, this is probably what we wanted to hit. And um, before that, let's move the camera up a bit so we get like a nice view. There we go. Nice view of the floor. Uh, this is fine. Let's make the numbers a bit nicer. 0 0.3. All right, let's add two more cubes. And duplicate this. So I'll call this side one. And call this side uh, two. It's a nice rainy day, so it's uh, pretty fun to be working on effects right now. All right, give me one sec. Um, right, yeah, let's just set this to two point six three, maybe. No, two point eight. Nice. And 2.8. Alright, yeah, so this is this is perfectly fine. So the last thing we'll need is the ball that's gonna be dropping. Uh we'll get a sphere a sphere object, resize this a bit, put it a bit higher. And let's see 0 0.5. Should that work? works fine uh, maybe a bit smaller 0 0.3 all right perfect so as of right now when we click play none of these objects are moving the ball isn't falling and neither is the floor it's not on anything so how we enable gravity to act on these objects is to add component 3D physics and then add a rigid body. This allows forces like gravity and all that to affect these 3D objects. And immediately the floor falls. So let's add rigid body to all of them. Let's just pause this so we don't have to go through that. Add component rigid body. Add component rigid body. Add component rigid body. And they're all falling. And um, so to stop certain pieces from falling, like the floor and the sides, all we'd have to do is go over to the rigid body component, and then you see is you'll see um an is static section. Just check here. What that means is it's not acted. Gravity has no effect on it, so it'll stay in place wherever it is. It's three D position. So let's do that for the side two and the floor. Now, if we are to play it, the only thing that falls is the sphere. But, all right, so the floor and sides are in position. The ball is in position. But for some reason, it's they aren't colliding. That's because we need colliders. So the next thing we'll do is we're already clicked on, we're already clicking on floor, add component. Um, so because this is a cube, we'll select the box collider. And uh, when you use the basic 3D cubes and sphere, um, setting up the box collider is really easy. It normally detects it really well. You see this green line around it. If you are using your own imported uh, 3D objects, it may you may need to do a little bit of work. Side, box collider, side two, box collider. And then the sphere also needs a collider, um, but we'll set that to sphere collider. And let's play it. Nice. Now let's actually start working on the game. So the sphere needs to go from left and right. The idea is it goes from left and right, and when the user taps the screen, wherever it is, it just falls all the way down. So let's start working on that. So we'll open the visual scripting window, and then on start, 
So as, let's pause this. Uh, as soon as the effect starts, um, there are many ways we can do this, but we'll use a transit by time. And basically what the transit by time does, we can click on this little icon, uh, transition from one value to another within a certain time range. So for this, would say, all right, start at, say, x, well, x negative 10 to x 10 on the y. Well, once you see it, <laughs> x negative 10 to 10, and then keep the y. And then the duration, we'll set this to three seconds. And we want this to happen almost infinitely. There is a way to do it infinitely, but for the sake of the tutorial and for understanding, we'll start here. This is good enough. And uh, we'll select ping pong. And what this is, is once it goes to the end, it will follow the same trajectory in time. It will just go all the way back. If ping pong was checked off, it would go to the end and then it would teleport back to the start. And then the sphere sphere position we'll use the stay so when you select states basically while all these calculations are happening for 999 times update the sphere position and you get the sphere position information oh I should make this a vec3 all right negative 10 it's always good to so just check over check the y and uh, we are using 3D, 3D objects, so I had to change it to Vec3 because, you know, X, Y, and Z coordinates. And then we can we update it here with the current value. So let's play it to see what it looks like. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, so if you've realized, let's restart this. Once it starts, it just falls. And that's because we didn't check is static. And... Basically, once we check it, we'll be stuck in time. There we go. We'll be stuck in the Y position, at least from the beginning. Nice. So the only thing that's left is uh, once you screen tap, once you tap on the screen, let's pause this. We want the grav we want gravity to act on the 3D on the 3D sphere. So the only way to, well, you have a bunch of ways, but one way to do that is to set static off. Because if you remember, setting it, um, setting static on just kept it in that 3D position. But by checking it off, gravity should act upon it. So let's see. Screen tap. And there we have it. Perfect. So... Let's bring this back a bit. The only thing I would say though is while um it works perfectly over here, the calculations are still being run in this transit by time node. And that may seem minuscule, but to just ensure that your effect is running as fast as it can on all devices, I'd say let's connect this to a sequence. And basically as We'll connect this second uh, second procedure to the stop. And basically what's going on is once the screen is tapped, the first thing we'll do is say, okay, uh, turn the static off so that the ball actually can fall. But the second thing we'll do is stop all these calculations so nothing is being run in the background once this is um, once static is off. And this should operate the same way. And nice. There we have it. So generally, this is the general idea of how to do something like this. So if this is all you wanted, this is great, but we're gonna see if we can add scores. All right. All right, so the next step would be to dictate how we get scores. So I'd like to say once the ball hits the floor, which is once the ball makes it into this little area, add one to it. So let's go collision event. And da uh, da da, collision component. Once the floor, yes. Event type on enter. Uh, 
Okay, so let's set a update node. And what this will be checking is when there is collision to the floor, uh, then we'll let's use a connect it to a counter and we'll add one to it. So let's take a peek at this value to see how it will work. All right. All right, so I've realized sometimes it doesn't initially pick up when we set the, the collider component in this way. So just go to the floor, go down to get box collider, and then connect it here, and let's try it again. And there we have it. So da, da 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 So you see it goes to three, and that happens because it bounced uh two. It bounced the it hit it the first time, and then it bounced an additional two times, which got it to three. But we can change that afterwards. What's important is that we know that it delect it detects the collision. So next, now that we have the score values, we can add. 3D text, which is great. Uh, until recent updates, we did not have 3D text, so it was was pretty bad. Well, not bad. You just had to use 2D images to get this all done. But the 3D text allows it to be a lot easier. So let's move this over here. Maybe the corner. This is nice. Uh, size this up a bit. Uh, do, 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 do. Colors are fine. Uh, oh, outline. I like that. I like that. And maybe shadow. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And then we'll set text. So right now, the counter outputs a number while this takes, I believe, a string. So if we try to do it, if we try to just connect it, it won't work, but it will generate a data convert, which will convert our number to string so that we can have it over here. All right, so let's start. Great, this is great. But if you realize what happens is um, it's not updating the text. Why? Because the we need to update the node itself. The value is being sent, but the node isn't getting information like, hey, um, change whatever value is there. So we need an update node. And there we go. Oh, missed it. Let's come again. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's uh let's just clean this up. Let's just clean this up. So one of the first things we'll realize is once we start, it's already set to one. That means it already detected collision. And where this comes from is because uh, collisions are on the side of this object right here. Collision, collision, uh, collision is set up for the side one, side two, and floor. And if you realize initially, side, I believe this is side two, it it overlaps with the floor. So collision is there from the get go, and similarly in one so we'll pull this out just a tidbit and we will see there we go perfect now the next part is is to allow um now we'd want it to only go up once. We only want the score to go plus one once it falls and uh, just not account for all the bounces. We know that the value updates between this point here, uh, between the collision event node and the counter node. This is where all the values increment into everything. But if we set this to do once, 
And I'll show you what we do after this. If we set it to do once, no matter how many times it bounces, it will only recognize the first bounce. One. Perfect. Let's try it again with maybe a better bounce. One, two, three. But it only it only went up one. Finally, after it bounces and we get the point if it goes in, all we have to do is we want it to go back to the top and then go back and forth again so we, the game can continue forever. So what we'll do is um, after the score has been updated, or actually after a score has been added, we can wait for a second. So let's pause this. Wait for one second. So after it hits the floor, if it hits it, just wait one second after and then activate. Let's, we'll set it back static. Set it static. So after it hits the floor, one second after, the ball will stop being affected by all forces. And that now allows us to, well, let's, I'm gonna make an, a very ugly stretch. <laughs> Uh, after we set it static, we start back the back and forth. So let's see what that looks like. This is perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect. And there we go. There we go. This is great. So let's play it one more time. Let's restart. And there's so much you can build on top of this. Oh, I see, I see, I see. There's one part we missed. One part we missed. So remember here when we wanted it to not account for all the bounces and we said, oh, only do once. So what then happens is because it's only done once, um, all the other times in which the ball collides with the floor like it just did, it's not going to send any values to counter. It's not going to update and it's not going to connect to all of this and start over because it's set to only do once. The best time to update it would be when the, when the transition starts, that would be a great time. I'm sure there are probably other times, but we can drag this from here. Another ugly cross, but for the sake of the tutorial and not having to use variables and whatnot, this is an easy way. So just connecting it, saying, oh, every time when it starts over, it starts. It starts calculating where it goes back and forth. Just reset the do once. So when it hits, it goes through. And let's see what that looks like. Goes here. One. Starts over. Goes back and forth. Goes here. Two. And it goes on and on and on. This is perfect. This is great. And finally, if you'd like to have a loose screen for this is part, I guess, the third, the third edition. If you'd like a loose screen, an easy way to do this would be if the sphere falls below a certain Y value. If the sphere falls below a certain Y value, throw, a, well, stop it so it doesn't keep falling forever. So the device stops calculating that, which could make it run slowly. You set it static. And then you throw a you lose screen. So let's see what that would look like. All right. So let's get the position. Get the sphere position. And we only want the Y. So we'll split this. And splitting basically separates the X, the Y, and the Z value. And we say if less than, less than, Let's say, what y value is this? All right, less than 50. No, negative 50. This is great. If less than negative 50, then where's the y static, the sphere? Static, set is static. Well, we need to connect this to an if. And then update. 
So what's going on is if the y falls below negative 50, and this if will always be checking it, the update just always runs. So the if will always be checking the ball position if it is if the y is less than negative 50. And then if it is true, it will set it, it will set the it will set it static. And then after that, we will throw a so let's add an object. I love 2D screen objects. They're so easy to use. Is that a you lose on the screen? And I do believe I have a you drop game. You lose. Perfect. So let's set this to you lose. And let's set this. Actually, let's see where this nice. Let's set this initially. Let's set this initially invisible. So yeah, there used to be a, I guess, visible, a visible check mark somewhere here, but I guess in this update, it's somewhat been removed. So da, 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 da. there's a still a way around this on start. We'll just set you lose invisible. Uh, visibility. We'll set the you lose invisible. And then once the once the ball is below negative fifty, we'll just set it visible so it pops back up on the screen. And do once so it doesn't keep popping up. And oop, we could do n. It's still the same, but we're looking for that do once. And then visibility. We'll turn it on. And voila, let's see how it looks. It's perfect. Oh, perfect. So yeah, this can look so much better with actual assets, but this is a general idea. And um, I'd love to see what everyone creates. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram or TikTok. Uh, link will be in the description for this effect. I may make it into a temp early template, just an example of projects so you can follow along or just use the references. So yeah, everyone, take care and uh, thanks for watching.